Hello, everybody. It's your friendly real estate agent, Melissa Hunter, and I have my favorite stager, Shaw Weaver, with me today. We're going to talk about what you want to do when you're listing your home to make it look like a million dollar listing in the stager's perspective. It's only going to be 15 minutes of your time, but it's going to be so worth the while. I hope that you guys enjoy this conversation. I'm going to let Shaw introduce herself. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Asha Weaver. I'm the owner of DNS Home Staging and Design. We're located in the Ventura County. Great, great. Yeah, we've been, oh my goodness, Shaw has done so many amazing things with the <laughs> houses that we listed. I've seen original homes, just people bidding over and over because of the just the beautiful ambiance that Shaw has placed in these homes. I'm going to, you know, also say that this back back end that you're seeing here in my office was compliments of Shaw's input as far as what to do. And Shaw, what did you just uh, mention to me that I could do with this shelf here? Well, for shelves, you know, you don't want it to be too crowded. What would be nice is to adding shapes and texture to it. So the little mm -hmm. vases nowadays you can find like at Target and some of these retail stores and they have really nice, um, just simple shaped vases. You can get different shapes of it and just mainly stick with a white or even just a clay finished vases mm -hmm. like different shapes they have the tall ones and the fatter ones and just make a little group of it and it will add interest and add some texture and layers to your look oh good well i'm definitely gonna go to target soon and, and get <laughs> the shelf completed so that i can have that <laughs> finalized finally thank you shaw for that input of course and, and you know shapes and stuff you know textures um that's where you know the professionalism comes in because you know, without your input, I wouldn't have put all of these these different textures and and feelings on my couch. Um, <laughs> and you know, the color that you gave me was just exactly what I was looking for, but I didn't know what the name was. So I love you know including a stager into the process of doing these things, um, and that's why I love this podcast today. Do you mind if we just head into the questions, Shaw? Oh, of course. Go ahead. Okay, great. Okay, the first question is, all right, 97% of buyers are looking online to choose their home. Now, you know, I'm a real estate agent and photos are everything. And not only are we doing photos these days to get these houses listed, but we're doing virtual staging and tours um, you know, online so they can, people can go online in a computer and actually walk around the house. Um, also we're doing a motion picture with music and editing. Um, so right. it's not just as simple as throwing a picture these days. Correct. And so the question to me, uh, to you, Shaw, is are, what are the things you feel are the most important for a seller to do before they list their home from an interior decorator's perspective? That's a, that's a great question. I think it's a, lots of the times that sellers overlook that because they feel like if I have a good location, my house have a good condition, it will just sell. Yeah, some most of the time, you know, location, it's, it's very important. But what gets your house sold fast and sell for top dollars. I think that's the goal for every seller. We don't want to just sell it. We want to sell the best amount of, uh, the most amount of dollars we can get, right? So details matter. Even for photos, you feel like, oh, you know, the photo's far away. You can't see the details. Oh, yes, you can. So what you want to do is definitely detailing your house. Thinking about, let me give you an example. Thinking about selling your car. When you sell your car, don't you want to detail it? Right. When you go yeah. on an interview, don't you dress up? Don't you do makeup? Don't you put nice mm -hmm. clothes on? So that's the same thing for selling your home. When you're trying to sell something, you want to present it the best way you can. Every little detail counts. For example, you got to make sure your toilet treats are off the counter. You don't want to see toilet paper laying around. You don't want to see socks or laundry baskets in your bedroom when you photograph them. So all these things. Think about when you go to a hotel room, what you don't want to see in the hotel room, it's what you don't want to see in your photos. 
when you when you prepare your home. So, few things very importantly uh, to do is one, it's decluttering. I think most of the people will understand that by now that you don't want your house look crowded because every piece of furniture or things in your home represents some kind of information, right? Whenever someone is looking at it, everything they see, they're processing it. So the more stuff that's in the space, the more information they're processing, the busier they feel in their head and, and it translates into just overwhelming feeling of being crowded. So whether that's the stuff it's too much or even though it's just stuff that's being there, but it can translate into not having enough of space, all because of the busyness. So you want to declutter. Mm -hmm. um, you want to depersonalize. What that means is uh, anything that's too personalized, for example, photos, you don't necessarily want a photos to show in your personal photos to show in your uh, home uh, uh, photos. And also, things that are very personalized, for example, uh, wall colors, and you want to paint it over with something neutral. And okay. sometimes, you know, people say, but I like it. Yes. Um, you know, when you live in a home, you do want it to represent yourself. You want it to be very personal. You can choose whatever color you want. But living a home is very different from selling a home. When you sell a home, you want to tune down that personality because you want this home to attract most of the people out there, right? And you're not selling the home to yourself. So don't think about what you want. Think about what the um, general public will like to see. So we want to tune down the colors. Um, so decluttering, depersonalize it, and neutralize the colors. And I think all these will help your home show better on photos and in person. Great. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants that million dollar look. And, you know, to achieve that with personal items can be very difficult. Um, running into my second question for you, Shaw, what room should a seller focus on when staging a home? and go all out, you know, what rooms are gonna really sell the house? That's a great question. So when we stage, uh, we offer full staging services for vacant homes. So when we stage, we normally recommend staging all the common area. That's the living room, the dining room, kitchen, bathrooms, uh, primary bedrooms. So these are the areas we feel and through our experience and years of uh, working with our agents and customers. And those are the rooms that the buyers will value the most, that will weigh the most in their decision making, whether they like the house or not. And guest bedrooms, for example, will less will be less important so you want to definitely invest in the area where that will generate the most uh return for when you spend money on, on staging so i would say the common areas and uh, the bathrooms even though bathroom is a small but people like to go into a bathroom and feeling like it's not completely outdated and um, because they want to they don't want to think about having to randomly bathrooms. They're expensive, they're inconvenient to work with. And so, so bathroom is important. Sometimes, yeah. you know, a bathroom, very often when we stage them, they're outdated, but by putting in pictures, just the cores, a fresh looking towels, you can refresh that bathroom, make it look so much better. And mm -hmm. you, you were, you were trying to show the potential that that bathroom can have. So staging bathroom is actually important, and uh, and then and then primary master uh, master bedroom obviously because you know those are the areas where a homeowner will spend most of their time in. So they will um, that will weigh a lot more in their decision making process uh, than some of the smaller bedrooms. Yeah, I you know I know that when you stage um, bathrooms, I like the what you do with the towels, and it really does. <laughs> make me feel like I'm in an upscale bathroom, regardless of what I'm in, you know, like if I'm just in a basic bathroom, but then your towel suggestion, which is um, rolling the towels, how do you, how do you, how do you recommend rolling the towel, Shaw, in the bathroom? Well, that's, you know, it changes out through the years. It all kind of depends on how, how uh, the current trend is right now. 
it's fluffier the better so we're all talking oh. about volume whenever you see volume that that seems to give you uh, a a feeling of more luxurious or more current so what i do is i usually fold the towel three folds and okay. then fold them again uh lengthwise fold them in half and then you fold it in half again that's when you put it on the bar so it has a really thick volume to the towels and uh, you can put a matching uh, hand towel on top of it just to add more layer and, and volume. And uh, neutral color towels definitely help. White cream uh, or really light gray, those are all nice choices depending on the color of your bathroom. Um, just simple things like that. I think these little items being added, it's actually creating like a, a, a lifestyle right mm -hmm. it's it's suggesting a lifestyle so they are important even though they're so small so like you said you know what can i do on a budget to make my home look nicer yes. for occupied uh, for for occupied homes that's what you know i work with you on lots of those and we don't have the luxury of bringing brand new furnitures because the owner's still living in there and they need their stuff and so even with the existing furniture we can still achieve a much much better and updated look by changing all the soft goods that's the artwork on the wall as simple mm -hmm. as the area rug um, sometimes lamps will change will add a different look and pillows like the I keep staring at your beautiful pillow in your background <laughs> that color is so cheerful so adding colors through accent pieces like uh, pillows and blankets and even vases and small things, uh, little potted plants. So all these will help and will add so much more to your home, make it homey, welcoming, and just ready to show. Um, yes. So these are small items and the pillow, it's to dress up an old couch, pillow is the way to go. You can have you know, pillows are very inexpensive to get and you can there's so many colors to choose from. So based on the color theme of your overall interior, you can choose the colors and patterns or textured however you want. And you can achieve very nice looking uh, a couch and that will add the couch. Usually it's a center of a living room. So when you have that centerpiece all set up and your room, it's it's lighting up. Most definitely. I think that my favorite pillow on this couch is this one right here. And I, I, I love it it's real fluffy and it has some texture to it. And uh, it just brings out the, the look of the room. Yeah, sure. absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so next question I have for you. And I think that we are really getting to uh, the nitty gritty as, as far as what, how you can turn your 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 property into a million dollar listing um you know so far you've mentioned textures pillows um rugs uh blankets around a sofa um clean looks right uh fluffy towels it's a lifestyle i like i like that word lifestyle think about a lifestyle and then bring your home into that lifestyle and that's what's really going to set it off and i i think that's a great concept um so, but, you know, second question I have is, um, and or third question I have actually, is what items really give a home a million dollar look with um, that a small budget can achieve? So, you know, I think that we've, we've really pointed out on that, you know, pillows and things like that. Um, Shaw, where can people get these things with a small budget? Well, you know, lots of times people feel like when I stage, I need brand new furniture, so I need brand new everything. And that's not necessarily the truth. I mean, when we're working with a budget with uh, people that don't have the luxury to have a full staging service coming in, and you can use your own furniture uh, to achieve, uh, you know, nice staging effects by positioning the furniture properly. You know, and how we use a room is very important. You want it, the first view every time you enter a room, that first view needs to be the best view. So make sure we work around that view and then also uh, adding soft goods. And also think about, you know, most of the time people sell home, they're moving to a new home. When you're moving to a new home, you're probably 
wanting to get new stuff anyways. Think about this as an opportunity. You're shopping for your new home. At the same time, you can already use that to sell your, your current home, right? So buy things that you would like, you know, invest in something that you can use again in your new home, right? And, and you can get new rugs, you can get new lamps and pillows and art, even artwork. You know, when you buy artwork, think about, oh, do I like this? I, I can use it again for my new home. We think that way, you're not just buying these things and for one time use to sell your home. They're actually something that you can take it with you. They have a much more, um, you know, usage out of it. Um, so the place, best places to get these things are, you know, if you're not thinking about getting some fancy artwork and Ross, TJ Maxx, yes. uh, Home Goods, these are all Hobby Lobby. These are all great places just to get, you know, we're not trying to, to do their commercial or anything, but, but those are places you can get uh, great finds with a really little budget. Um, so these are, are my go-to places whenever I look for something, you know, uh, in a hurry, and you can just go pick it up and, and uh, start dressing up your room. And, you know, lots of times I want to circle back to the fact that living in a home, it's very different from, uh, selling a home right the yeah. way we live it it's not the way we're gonna sell it and lots of times when you live in the home for a long time and you don't necessarily can see outside the way you've been using the home right but there, that's when you were talking about sometimes when we go in to do a consultation and we help the buyer uh, we help the sellers to to reposition their furniture to re um, define their rooms and it come out looking like a completely different house. That's exactly why you uh, bring in someone that hasn't been living in the house because they have a, a, a much more fresh perspective that they can give to each room and give it to your home. And, and when you're stuck in, in the arrangements of furniture for so long, you can't see about any other way of using your furniture. And when we come in, we can go from a very professional um, space oriented or uh, detail oriented perspective to tell you, hey, actually you can re reposition your couches this way and it'll look much better. And that's a result of, you know, lots of times our uh, consultation where we gave the a room a whole new definition or whole new arrangement. And as a result, it, it looks completely different. So, so definitely seeking a professional uh, advice on how to reorganize your home and uh, getting new, fresh um, mm -hmm. soft goods for your home to add the details. And because those details actually really build a, uh, a, a connection uh, emotionally with the buyers. Right. Whenever, for example, I'm looking at your artwork, you know, that's a, that's a lifestyle that's that conveys emotion. So instead of staring at a blank wall, you go in, you can read the words, inspiring words on the artwork. You can look at the colors on your uh, on the cushions. These are all these items all have emotions to it. So that will connect with this a buyer that much more when you have these items in them. Most definitely. Um, one of the things that I'm going to do after this podcast is I'm going to show a motion picture of a property that you were uh, successful putting things together with people's own furniture, um, the property in Ojai uh, that, you know, sell with flying colors and the motion picture came out just absolutely amazing. That property looked completely different than it did before you came in there and rearranged some things. Um, so I definitely want to show that as a, as a showcase piece um, for our viewers so that they can see what you can actually do with your own items. Um, Correct. And also, yeah. I, I think that people have a misconception about stagers sometimes. Um, they think that a stager is only designed for a vacant house, you know, with nothing in it. Um, Correct. But the reality of it is, is that stagers do all sorts of variations of staging um, and it could, they could work with a lot of different budgets and still make the home just look like a million dollar listing. Correct. Yeah. And that's exactly right. Lots of the times it's great if you have the budget and you have a vacant home and we can just bring in everything from our warehouse to set it up 
as perfectly showroom uh, sh showcase home. And but yes. I, I want to say most of the um, sellers actually do have to live in their home. They do right. uh, have to you know, think about budget and when they sell, because most of the time when you sell, you do lots of repairs to the home. So th those are all take up the budget. So when you don't have the luxury to, to have a full staging service done and um, have us do a consultation and they're really inexpensive and you can get our professional advice on everything. We walk the, by, uh, we walk the sellers um, through room by room, inch by inch, we talk about every single wall, every corner of the house, what you need to do, what you should do. And sometimes, you know, we work with the, with, with the situation that the clients might have, for example, if they couldn't move certain pieces, we'll find creative ways to, to best showcase the home. I mean, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's not ideal to have certain furniture in there, but we can, um, dress it up, we can change the look of it by adding different pieces, by tuning down the colors. I mean, these are all the things that we are good at and we're professional at. And that really helps um, to just give a much better and refreshing look to your home when you get ready to sell. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, the service that you provide, the consultation service, is so invaluable to my business. You know, it used to be that I would just work with a client and get the house ready for photography. Um, but now, you know, hiring you on every listing so that the property is prepared for the photography is the only way I go. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with using my service, you get Shaw's service included and it's a huge benefit to my business and it's a huge benefit to the client as well because they can be confident that they're getting the right consultation from the right person. Um, and then, oh, thank you, know, you. Of course. And then they can explore all of the different options that you have in, in the case that you feel that they could use some sprucing or, or something like that. Um, one other thing I want to add that we haven't really talked about much is, you know, people people have this understanding that the photography is going to include their garage, their closets, you know, and I want to, I just want to make sure that people understand these are our favorite places to hide things. <laughs> <laughs> photography and motion pictures. We are not walking in your closets. We are not going in your garage um, unless the garage is just immaculate. Uh, but these are the places that people are throwing their furniture in, throwing their throwing their extra added items that we don't want to see. Um, so I want to just encourage people to use those spaces when they are looking to make their house like a million dollar listing. Um, so last question is, so what should a seller remove in their home before listing? Where do people put excess furniture and items? As I mentioned, you know, closets, garages right. on that one. Uh, but the first one, you know, what would you say are the most common items that you say, hey, this got, this has to go. <laughs> this, this is not Oh, work. yeah. So, yes. So some of the things, you know, when we sell home, don't take this personally because we're trying to, you know, maximize uh, the appearance of your home and in turn the value of your mm -hmm. of your home. So anything we suggest is purely from a visual perspective, right? So mm -hmm. photos taken down for sure, because in the past, you know, we suggest that because we don't want other people to see your face everywhere, every room you go into, right? You want the buyers to see themselves, visualizing themselves walking through the house. So by every time they see some, someone else's face on the wall, that drag them away from what they can see with the home. So we, we definitely suggest taking down all personal photos. And nowadays, I also suggest that really for the seller's uh, protection, because that's your face, your identity. And given the world we're in right now, and you want to protect that, you don't you want your privacy, uh, you don't necessarily want everybody to, to know what you look like, what your children looks like, what your grandchildren look like. So put that away, those are precious to you, you don't need someone else to, to look at your pictures, right? So put that away. <laughs> Supermodel people, take those pictures down, even if you think that you're the hottest thing on the block, you don't want to see them. 
<laughs> right. So, uh, so, so take the photos down for sure. And I also say, you know, anything that's um, could be offensive to someone, weapon, for example, or uh, I can't think of something else. But you know, anything that could be offensive, just take them yeah. down because these are our favorite things. You know, mm -hmm. some people might not share that belief or whatever it is that you share. Uh, you don't need people to judge on you. You don't need to turn them away because we're just trying to sell a home, right? Take all your personal items, especially if it's collectible, put them away and put something very generic or generic on the wall. And also things I always say is when you are trying to get ready to sell your home, keep this in mind, less is more. Everybody talks about it, but you really need to understand less is more. And sometimes, you know, you have four walls in a room. Only one wall needs a picture. You don't need to have wall pictures on all of the walls. Sometimes we do put pictures on a couple walls, but not every single wall has to be filled with the photos or, or artwork. And the same thing with the corner of the room. Sometimes it's okay to leave a corner of the room empty, right? You want to give the room for imagination. You don't want to fill it in. And where people come in, they can't see everything else beyond what you have in there. So gave, gave the buyers uh, room to imagine, gave them, you know, it's another thing for in, related to this, it's a window treatment. Sometimes we uh, suggest if you don't have anything uh, fancy to put up or window treatment, we actually suggest to have them just removed. Because yeah. window treatment is really personal touch. A lot of people come in, they want to put their own touch on there. Mm -hmm. So if you have a just plain window, you're inviting them, saying, hey, come on, give me a design. Tell me how you're going to do this. And once you get them started thinking about designing for this home, they started feeling more connected to it. And it's, it's a technique actually help them sell at your home, help, help the, uh, the sellers to sell your home. So give them... Uh, some empty space, right? Just have yeah. less stuff in your home. And that's, that's the, the key. I and uh, the, people get so, uh, so with their personal items sometimes that it's really difficult for them to take them down. They get offended. Um, but you know, with, when you sell your house, the best, the best approach is to, to provide an, an a million dollar lifestyle. Um, for sure. And, you know, that's what you as a stager achieves in a home to present the home with a luxurious lifestyle. And all of us, you know, definitely want to walk into a house like that and buy it. You know, whether it's a small condo with two bedrooms or it's a, you know, massive property with five bedrooms, um, mm -hmm. we feel like it's luxurious. We feel comfortable and cozy in it and we can envision ourselves upgrading ourselves in that house um, that's what's going to get us to to buy it it's the upgrade feeling inside of us uh, and when it right. feels like a low grade or we're downgrading ourselves or we're putting ourselves in a space that we're unfamiliar in it's not going to sell it's just not going to sell everybody we have to focus on luxury and upgrade in order to sell these homes um, Sean, thank you so much for um, coming today and and sharing all of these great ideas. I think that I've learned so much from you. Believe it or not, I don't have a decorative thumb in my body. <laughs> so, um, so, you did great. You did great with your office. Look at it. That's all you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I've learned so much from you. I listen to every single word you told me. I'm going to run out to Target <laughs> and, look at that, uh, and look at those bases as soon as I can on a lunch break and uh, get that shelving done. Um, but, you know, at the end here, again, please, everybody stay tuned because I am going to show you a motion picture that we shot of a house that Shaw decorated with the client's personal items so that you could see how she turned a property with pets inside and lizards crawling on the wall, believe it or not, <laughs> um, to this luxurious look uh, that took the property 10 times, you know, higher as far as a, a presentation. And uh, we got a, you know, great offer well over what the, the client was actually asking. Uh, where can they, where can people find you? 
Like oh, uh, we're located in Camarillo, and we okay. serve uh, Old Ventura County and some uh, some big part of uh, LA County as well. And uh, we have a website, and you can go to that's DNS dash design dot com, and okay. uh, you can find our contact information, email, phone number on the website, or you can go on to、uh, Facebook. Just search for. DNS home staging and design, and it will come up for you too. So we are,、uh, we're here. Wonderful. Well,、um, one of the things I definitely want you guys to do is hit the subscribe button so that I can keep bringing you these informative podcasts. I hope that you guys enjoy them. I'd love to hear from you.、Um, make a remark on the podcast so that I I know that you are enjoying these podcasts. Uh, please also reach out to Shaw if you want her services. Now Shaw doesn't just talk to people about staging for selling. You know, call Shaw if you have any consultation needs.、Um, she could even possibly help you stage your own property.、Um, she's also an interior designer. So there's so many possibilities with Shaw、uh, that you can use. So please go on her website,、uh, give her a call. I'm sure she'd love to hear from you as well. Thank you, you so reach, much, Melissa. Yes, yes, definitely. You can reach me,、um, of course, by subscribing with this podcast, and、uh, also www. Walters Group Real Estate. Com. My phone number is eight zero five three one two seven six two seven. So I will put all of this, of course, in this podcast for you guys to clearly see. But again, I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love for you guys to subscribe. Thank you for joining us today.